Well, it's time to see what made the base of your Ultramarine or other Space Marine chapter army in 2nd edition. Now, before we move on to the units, one thing I need to briefly talk about is the ability for Marines to deploy themselves into combat squads. If a unit consists of 10 Marines, then you can split them into two squads of five. One half is led by the Sergeant, and then the other model is dubbed the Veteran, but just counts as one of the Marines. This is mainly done to allow you to split your forces up a bit more, seeing as Marines were a bit pricey back in the day, and not having to worry about entire squad potentially getting one shot by something. Still, the first unit on the cards is the Terminator Squad. Every Space Marine chapter has a small number of Terminator armor suits. Also known as Tactical Dreadnought armor, they are heavy and bulky, but incredibly durable, able to withstand incredible amounts of heavy weapon fire and use powerful weaponry, using and requiring two hands for a normal ring to wield with just one. The armor is very rare though, and very precious to the Space Marines, so only those in the first company of the chapter are allowed the honor of using it. Terminators were 315 points, and came with five Terminators, one being the Sergeant. They were Movement 4, Weapon Skill 5, Blessed Skill 5, Strength 4, Toughness 4, Ruins 1, Initiative 5, Attacks 1, Leadership 9. They all come with Power Fists and Stormfolds as base, along with Targeters, and of course Terminator Armor, which was a 3 plus save on 2d6, so even if something was a minus 5 save on a fire, the Terminators could still save against it. Now, one of the models could replace their weapon with a heavy weapon, and any of them could replace their power fist with an assault weapon. The entire squad could also teleport into battle, though this increased the squad's cost by 50% after buying war gear. Yeah, so there was no standard assault terminator squads back in the day. You could mix and match, so you could have one with assault cannon, a couple of lightning claws, and the other storm bolts if you wanted, which is nice. But of course, if you want to go dedicated, nothing's stopping you. Now, next up is the veterans. These are Space Marines who are also part of the first company, but not wearing one of the suits of Terminator armor. They are usually tasked with leading squads from other companies, but sometimes when the situation calls for it, they will be deployed together as a squad to fight. They show their skills and powers over the years of fighting, able to perform strikes and feats that are impressive even compared to other Space Marines in the chapter. The veteran squad was 330 points, and had one sergeant and nine Marines. They were movement 4, weapon skill 5, Best skill 5, strength 4, toughness 4, runes 1, initiative 5, attacks 1, leadership 9. They all come with bolt pistols, bolt guns, frag grenades, and power armor base. One model in the unit could have a heavy weapon, and another could have a special weapon from the armory. The entire squad could have crack grenades for 30 points, and the sergeant may replace his bolt gun with any assault weapon. Yeah, I gotta say for a bunch of veterans, they were basically a tactical squad with better stats, and that's it. Speaking of, the tactical marines are the most common of a space marine in a chapter. Once the marines training is finished, they join the ranks of the tactical marines. They are highly flexible and tactically adapt troops, which each squad having their own unique war gear and role depending on the squad members. This allows them to be deployed in multiple roles as needed on the battlefield, and able to fill roles and gaps in battle lines or plans when needed to ensure a swift victory for the chapter. Tactical squads were 300 points, and had 9 marines and a sergeant, and were movement 4, weapon skill 4, best skill 4, strength 4, toughness 4, runes 1, initiative 4, attacks 1, initiative 8. And equipment wise, they are exactly the same as the veterans. Like, no difference at all to what they could take and what they came with. The exact same. Yeah, this is an interesting thing at the time, as really, unless you were trying to cut points or committing to a theme, the veterans really were a better option to take with the increased stats of 30 points. This is also specific to this codex, as Space Force had Grey Hunters and Wolfguard, who were different, and the Angels of Death Codex, both Angels factions did their veterans differently. It's just one of those oddities of everything being lumped in squads, really, that the Tentacle Marines felt a bit out of place. Still, onto the Assault Marines. While others of the chapter are usually providing long-range firepower, the Assault Marines' sole purpose is to get into combat with their opponent. This is done if you've been countered enemy lines by Rhinos and Razorbacks, or more often, via jump packs. These allow them to leap over difficult terrain of ease and come down the enemy lines of bolts of fire and grenades before engaging the survivors in melee combat where they thrive. Assault squads are... actually the same cost, squad size and stat line of tactical marines. Equipment wise however, they do differ. They come with bolt pistols, crack grenades and frag grenades base. 
Any model in the squad is allowed to take an assault weapon from the war gear section of their choosing. Up to two models can be given special weapons, and the entire squad can be given blind grenades for 20 points or melted bombs for 50 points. Now, you can also give the entire squad jump packs for 50 points, but if you choose to combat squad them, and the squads are five, then you can choose to just give five of the marines jump packs of 25 points instead. Yeah, they love their names quite nicely, but yeah, the fact that you could combat squad them is really nice. It could give them different assault walls in the army with, say, sticking someone a razor back and the others with jump packs. Still, next up we have the Devastator Squad. And these marines tend to be ones that have passed the rank of scout, but not reached the point to be a tactical marine just yet. As such, they are given the role of providing long-range fire support as a Devastator. They are responsible for ruining the vast majority of heavy weapons in the chapter and bringing down heavily armoured units, vehicles or emplacements to assist the main army. Still, even when they become technical marines, many will continue to use their heavy weapon if they show great skill with them. Now, do you want to guess how much the Devastator Squad was base and its makeup? Yep, same as the previous two, no difference again. Now equipment wise, basic equipment was bolter, bolt pistol, frag grenades, and your power armour, but they can also take up to four heavy weapons. The sergeant can take any assault weapon for the war gear list, replacing the bolt gun as usual. Now again, not much of a change really compared to the tactical marine, but combat squatting was useful. Could have one squad be focused on infantry with like heavy bolters, and then the other one could have two lance cannons, or you could just put all the bolter marines as a mini tactical squad and the heavy weapons all together. So again, nice variety there. Still, on to your entry level marine, the scout. These are initiates who, after completing the initial training, will be brought into the scout corps. They are less heavily armoured than normal marines, but their role is to clear the variants of the chapter's main force. They will scout out the enemy positions, providing intel back to the chapter, but also laying traps and ambushes to do any supply lines or blow up ammo dumps. Once the scout has proven themselves, they then move on to become a full battle brother. So, scouts were 100 points, and consisted of 4 scouts and a sergeant. The scouts were movement 4, weapon skill 4, blitz skill 3, strength 4, toughness 3, runes 1, initiative 4, attacks 1, leisure 7, while the sergeant was movement 4, weapon skill 4, blitz skill 4, strength 4, toughness 4, runes 1, initiative 4, attacks 1, leisure 8. Equipment wise, they had bolt pistols, frag grenades, and scout armour, which gave them a 4 plus save. Now, they could have anything from the scout weapon list, and one model in the squad could have a heavy weapon or special weapon. The sergeant could have anything from the assault weapon section. The entire squad could also be given crap grenades for 15 points. Now, scouts did not have the break test or rapid fire rules due to not being full marines yet, but they did have their own unique ones. First, they could infiltrate, so they could be deployed in no man's land at the end of the deployment phase as long as they were outside of the enemy, letting them get into better positions. The other is they fought in a dispersed formation, so they could be four inches away from another model in the squad without breaking squad cohesion. Yeah, that's a nice little disruption thing to have around. Now the final squad available is the Bike Squadron. Usually made up of marines of the assault variety, they are well armed and highly mobile units in the Space Marine chapter. They are usually used as reconnaissance troops to get an idea of enemy positions, but in battle are also used as a hit and run troop to strike enemy four positions. These attacks are designed to cause disruption to the enemy lines to weaken them for when the main force arrives. Bikes actually had variable squad size compared to everything else. They were 47 points a model and came to squads of 3 to 5, and the marine crew were movement 4, problem skill 4, blitz skill 4, strength 4, toughness 4, runes 1, leadership 4, attacks 1, leadership 8. They came with bolt pistols and frag grenades base, along with power armour. Any model could have an assault weapon, and up to two could have special weapons. They could also have bland grenades for two points, and crack grenades for three points a model. Now the squad could also be accompanied by an attack bite for 110 points, but they came from the support section, so we'll cover them then. Now the bike itself had twin link bolt guns, and a slow speed of 10 inches, combat speed of 15, and fast of 30. It had a RAM value of strength 5, D4 damage and minus 2 save modifier. Now when attacking the bike, on a 1 to 2 you hit the rider, and was wounded like normal and if killed, the bike goes out of control and flips over next turn. The bike itself is hit on a 3 to 6 and is armour 10 all over. For its damage table, on a 1, the bolt guns are destroyed. 
On a 2, it now only moves at slow speed for the rest of the game. On a 3, for the rest of the game you had to roll a 4 plus at the start of the movement phase or it goes out of control. On a 4, the bike flips over, kills the rider and the wreck lands d6 inches in a random direction and anything it lands on takes d3 strength 6 hits of a minus 2 save modifier. On a 5, the engine explodes, killing the rider and the bike then goes out of control next turn before going to a stop. And 6, the fuel explodes, it's the same as 5, but um, when it reaches its destination, it then explodes with a 3 inch radius, doing D3 strength 8 hits with a minus 3 save modifier to everything in that radius. Ow! And that's the squad, so I'm second ed. So yeah, the technical means definitely feel a bit left out really, but everything was solid and pretty much continued to roll as additions went on, as yeah, marines have not changed much over the additions up until 8th brought in the Primaris. Now, next time we're going to look at the support section, and many of the things that got introduced in this codex that weren't in the Space Wolf one. See you then.